Moses had led the people out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of bondage. He led them forth triumphantly with power, with mighty signs and wonders. God declared his glory. And there came a time where the people forsook God and, and turned aside from faith and from trusting in him. They grumbled and complained. And God said to Moses, get out of the way. I'm going to destroy these people and I'll make of you another nation. Moses fell to his knees and cried out to God, Oh God, what will the rest of the world say when they see that your own people you could not bring through into the promised land? That you could not even save, that you, you set them free, but then you destroyed them? And he stood in the gap and interceded and, and stood for the people. God, have mercy on these people. And God, the Bible says, God relented. And he said, Okay. Moses, you can lead these people. But I, my presence, will not go with you. But I will send an angel before you. And Moses again fell to his knees and said, Oh God, I will not leave this place unless your presence stand by me. Unless your presence go with me, I will not take even one step from this place. And that was a pretty good offer. I'm sure many of us would love an angel to go before us. The angel of, of God to, to lead us and to guide us before us. But Moses did not want to set, uh, settle for second best. He wanted nothing but the presence and the glory and the power of God. He wanted to walk with God. He wanted God to walk beside him, to lead him directly. And so he said, Lord, there's nothing. I will not do nothing. I will go nowhere until your presence leads me and your presence guides me. I wonder if that's the cry of our hearts this morning. Is that the cry of your heart, Lord? I will make no decision. I will do nothing unless I know that you are with me. Unless your presence leads me. Unless you guide me. Lord, I'm hungry. I'm through every valley. Face the fire and the darkness. David just cries out with a hungry heart, with a heart that knows. And the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. He was a man that knew how to humble himself before God. Yes, he made mistakes. Yes, there are times he committed dreadful sins, yet that broke his heart. He humbled himself before God and cried out for mercy and repentance and turned from his wickedness. To serve and to love and to obey the Lord God. For all I want, all I want is to see your face, O oh God. And all I need, all I need is your grace, Jesus. Oh, the wonder of your love. Face 
into your presence. Lord, the greater that we come and fall in love in with you as we run into your arms and lean upon your lap as our Papa, as our Father, as our Daddy, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come. My God, you said that the kingdom of God is within us. For you deposited there by the power of and by the person of your Holy Spirit. Lord, our hearts this morning are hungry and we are thirsting after you. Fill us. So break my heart, renew my soul, please set me free and make me So the Lord, most of my life, and He really spoke to my heart and He said, Will you go? And I said, Lord, I will go. How easy it is to say that. <laughs> yeah, take me, Lord. Use me, I'll go. And then we do nothing. But God really challenged me, said, Will you go to the nations? And He, he gave me a scripture from Revelation. He said, uh, That I'm going to open doors. He says, You say that you were small, but because of your faithfulness, you know, God says, if we are faithful in the small things, He will grant us to rule over great things. And uh, He's looking, the Word of God says that He is looking down from heaven, even today, right now I believe God is looking down from heaven. He's seeking, He is searching for men and for women who will stand in His name and simply believe. What a powerful statement. Simply believe, Jesus said that. He said, if you simply believe, you will see the glory of God. I want to see His glory. I want His glory. He says that He fills us, that we are the planting of the Lord. He fills us with His glory. Isaiah 61 says, Arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Listen, although there be thick darkness round about us, and never before really have I have we seen such thick darkness round about us right across the world today? There's pain, there's agony, there is heartache even on our, our, our back doorstep. There's pain and hurt and brokenness, there's broken hearts, there's abuse, there's men and women are crying out for love, seeking God. But the problem is they search for Him in all the wrong places. They become deceived and the devil leads them astray. The Word of God says we're like sheep who have gone astray, each one after his own way. And God has laid upon his Son the iniquity, the sin upon his Son. I love this simple gospel message. I love it. 
that God so loved the world He gave His only Son, that whosoever should believe in Him shall not perish. Believing in this Scripture and right through the Word of God, let me say that it's not enough just to believe. You say, what? I say that the devil believes. The devils himself believe the Word of God tells us. And they tremble at the thought of God. Jesus said, who are those who truly are my disciples? You say, I believe. God, Jesus said, those who obey my commandments. We can hear the Word. We can believe the Word. But unless we obey the Word, it remains dormant in our lives. But if we obey, then this truly is believing. Jesus said, who are those who truly love me? And he answered the question. He said, those who obey my word. Those who obey my commandments. I love uh, John's Gospel, uh, chapter 15. Jesus praying for the disciples. He says, just as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Can we just pause there for a moment? How much does the Father love the Son? How great is the love of the Father unto His Son, Jesus Christ. And the same love Jesus prays for you and me. He says, the same love that I have lived in, the same love that, that I know of my Father, in that same way, in that same manner, to that same extent, the fullness of my Father's love upon me I bestow. I give unto you. And then he invites us. He says, come. Come and remain in my love. Wow. What an invitation. Who would like to live in the love of God? Who wants to abide in the love of God? Who wants to remain and dwell in the love of God? I love the, the story of the baptism of Jesus. He came up out of the water. The Holy Spirit came upon him. We read then that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit was given unto Jesus without measure. Without measure. I want the Holy Spirit without measure in my life. But sadly the Word of God says many are called but, but few are chosen. Many are called but few are chosen. The, the religious leaders, the very priests that were called by God to carry the Word of God and to declare the Word of God and to lead the people of God. When Jesus came upon this earth, He walked amongst them and He says, You have missed the visitation of God. You have missed the visitation of God because of your pride, because of your tradition, because of your religiosity. You have missed the visitation of God. For they did not receive Jesus. And he wept over Jerusalem, over Jerusalem, Jerusalem, over his people. He wept over them. He says, How I have longed, my father has longed to gather you like a hen, mother hen gathers its chicks. It keeps them warm, keeps them safe, keeps them protected, abiding in her presence. So the father longs to gather you and to gather me. And he gives the call. He says, Come unto me. Those who are weary, those who are burdened, those who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Sometimes we stand and we say, Oh, bless the Lord. Yes, bless Him, bless Him. But it says, not like that, it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. And it says, forget not His benefits. For, and then He says, and I love this passage of Scripture, for I am. I am. Remember that? Moses in front of the burning bush, who shall I say, Lord, that you are? He says, tell them that I am. I am your provider. I am your healer. I am your deliverer. I am your ever-present help in the time of need. I am the rock of ages. I am the ancient of days. I am your fortress. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I am a rock-solid foundation. 
I am your help. I am your guide. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God who forgives you of all your sin and heals you of all your diseases. Do you believe that this morning? How is it that we believe He can forgive all our sin, but we don't believe He can heal all our diseases? It's the Word of God. It's in the same breath of God. It's in the same sentence. I am the Lord, your God, who forgives all your sin and heals all your diseases. I believe right now that faith, Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. When, when, when Lazarus died and Mary and Martha were weeping, they came to Jesus and said, Oh Jesus, if only you had been here. Jesus said, simply believe and you will see the glory. For I am the resurrection and the life. Lord, yes, Lord, I know in the last day my brother shall rise. No, look unto me. I today, I am here with you now. I am today the resurrection and the life. What is there in your life that has been dormant? What has been, what's been, what's died? What, what death is there within you? Today God wants to come and says, Arise and shine, for my light has come, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. No matter how thick darkness be read about you, the glory of the Lord has risen because Jesus has risen. And the same power of God, Scripture tells us in Ephesians, the same power of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Wow, how powerful was that? The same power that raised Jesus shall also lift you up and give life, listen, unto your mortal bodies. There is life. There is healing. There is health. I believe even right now as I'm speaking, the presence of Jesus is here to touch you and to heal you. The power of God is here to deliver you and to release you from your fear, from your depression, from, from, and, and to heal you from sickness and disease. If you simply believe, let Him touch you right now. Reach out to him as I share the word of God. I love Isaiah 26, 9. My soul yearns for you, O Lord, in the night. Yes, my spirit within me seeks you earnestly. For only when your judgments are on the earth will the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness, which is uprightness. Listen, the word of God. Scripture says my people perish for lack of knowledge. We need an understanding. We need a revelation. We need an openness uh, of the word of God that would, would drop from our our minds into our hearts and we would establish it uh, rooted deeply within our lives the power of God the love of God Paul says I desire it is my prayer that you get an understanding of the and a revelation of the love of God how deep how wide how high but also of his grace and his mercy and of his judgments for consider both the kindness and the severity of God. For though He rescues us from our sin and our pride and our selfishness, He also condemns us in our pride and in our sin and in our selfishness. But there is no condemnation to those that are in Jesus Christ. That loves you, the God of creation that created heaven and earth, loves you because you are special. You are precious. You were not an accident. He purposed you. He planned you. He designed you. He created you. And that is calling you to draw close to me. He says, if you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord.